Tableau is such a versatile tool that you can create any kind of charts. And today we are going to learn how to create periodic table in Tableau. So without any further ado, let's get started. Welcome back, my name is Gurpreet and if this is the first time you are visiting my channel then make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you stay up to date with all of my videos. So let's get started. In today's tutorial we are going to learn about how to create periodic table in Tableau. Well periodic table is also known as the table of elements where all the chemical elements are arranged in a row called periods and columns called groups. And they are also arranged in the increasing order of atomic numbers. So as you can see here, we have all these elements from hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, and so on, with their atomic number at the top left corner, and the symbol in the middle, and the name at the bottom. So how we can create this? Well, it's quite simple. All these rounded corner squares, which you can see here, are basically just plotted on an X and Y coordinates. So if we see on, or if we hover over to any of these elements, you can see at the bottom of the tooltips, we have one and 10 in this case. So that's the value of X and Y axis. So what I'm trying to show here is like, each of these elements are plotted on the X and Y coordinate, where X axis is at the bottom and Y axis is at the left top side. So what we are trying to do here is plotting each of these elements. So for example, we have x axis for all of these elements as one, and it's going up from y axis value from four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So that's how we have plotted all of these values on the Tableau for all these elements. So there are a couple of ways to achieve that. One is, as I mentioned, using x and y coordinates. The other one is using polygons, where you plot all the x and y axis value of these squares and then use polygons and path values to plot all of these ones. Which can be tricky because you have to plot all the x and y coordinates for each of the point on these squares. But if you have some tool with which you can generate that, you can use polygons as well. So let's first look at the data set. So for this, I have a data set which talks about atomic mass, atomic number, um, boiling point, bonding type, and so on for all of these elements. So here we can see the symbols of each of these elements, their name, their type, and here is the x and y axis. So here I have plotted the x and y coordinate values for each of these elements. For example, as I mentioned earlier, hydrogen, we have the x-axis value as 1 and y-axis value as 10. So as I have shown you earlier here, if I hover over to this one, you can see the x-axis value, which is in the tooltip is 1, and the y-axis value is 10. Same way, if I hover over to lithium, its x-axis value is 1 and y-axis value is 9. So that's what we have plotted it here in the data set. So once we have all the x and y coordinates, then you can simply plot it in the dashboard. So let's now go to the dashboard and see how we can create it from scratch. Let's open a blank workbook and we connect to the data source and that's the text file or the CSV file which I'm using here. So I will select that and we can see all the values on the fields are in our data source now. So let's go to sheet one. And what we need to do is, so we have X and Y axis. So first I will bring the X axis to column and Y axis to rows. So you can see here, X axis is here and Y axis is plotted here with the one mark created at the top right corner. This is because we haven't brought any element in the detail marks. So for that, I will bring name in the detail mark and you will see all these elements have started to plot. Let's change the view to entire view and we can see here all these values are already plotted. So if you see here the bottom two lines instead of using 1 and 2 I have used here 1.5 and 2.5 for the y-axis just to align these bottom two rows close to the top section. 
So once we have that, now we all we need to do is just to change the shapes. So either you can change the shapes from here, just keep it square, and you can increase the size like this. That looks pretty nice as well. Or you can create your own shapes. So if I bring that into the dashboard, and let's change the width to 1600 by 850. And if I bring this sheet here, you can see the product table is already coming to together, right? So now let's change the shape. Instead of square, you can choose any shape, or you can choose the shapes from your Tableau repository, the custom shapes. So in this case, I will use the custom shapes, and let's say I want to use um, this, this black shape, right? And I will use this one here. And I will change the background to dark gray color so it looks nice. But before that, let's change, the, let's bring the symbols into the text label. And also, I want the atomic number. And let's bring that into the text label as well. And also, I want the name in the text label. <clears throat> so now let's go to the text label and align all of them together. So I want the atomic number at the top. So I will do a little bit of formatting here. I will bring <clears throat> atomic number at the top. And I would like to bring the symbol in the middle and name at the bottom. So atomic number, I will keep it left aligned and symbol in the middle and name in the middle as well. But symbol, I will change the size to 12 and atomic number, I will keep it to 8 and name, I will keep it to let's say 6. And I will select the color and change it to almost white or gray. And I want to make sure that the alignment is in the center and the middle. Right? And let's bring that into the dashboard now. And you can see here the size is a bit small. So let's increase the size so it can fit properly. And let's go and see here how it looks like. So it's a little bit bigger. And let's try to go back and reduce a little bit. So this way you can adjust and work it out how it looks better. So it's coming through. Now if you see some of the labels are not populating because we haven't allowed it to overlap. So once we do that, it will all come together. Now what I need, I need to do a little bit of formatting and I want to change the worksheet color to none and I will remove all the borders and grid lines. We don't need grid lines, we don't need zero lines, and the axis ruler as well. And here you can see the values, right? So for these elements, we are using x-axis as 4 value and y-axis as 1.5. And now I will just hide the headers on both the sides. And it's already looking nice. So let's, let's give the dashboard background by going formatting and change it to different shade of gray so it pops up like this and it's already looking nice and also we can distinguish the colors by distinguish the type of the elements by color so we can simply bring in the type to the color mark and you can see all of these colors are changed and here you will see all of them are populating nicely. You can change the color based on your requirement, or if you have particular coloring standards, then you can use that. And here you go, that's all created. So that was one way of creating it. So now let's try to create it using map layers. So for that, first of all, I have to create a calculated field, and I have to create a point. So I will use make point function and I will use y and x axis coordinate here and plot it. So now simply double click on make point and you will see all these points are created. 
right so now I will go to first of all map and I will go to background layers and I will wash out the background and you will see all these points are created here as well and you can again change it to the shape and when you change it to the shape you will see only one point because we haven't brought name of the element in the detail shelf so once we bring that you will see all of these elements are populated as well so you can increase the size and after adjusting the formatting you will have it ready here so now let's go and create the dashboard again so I will give you another trick after this so which is quite handy using map layers so let's plot this chart first here and it's already there right so I will use just uh, default shapes for this particular <coughs> demonstration for using make point and map layers so let's see how we can do that so let's go back to the sheet and we will bring all the things again so let's bring the symbol first into the label mark and I will change the size to 12 and I will make the alignment the center and middle so we have the product table created with the symbol as the element but now I don't want to add the atomic numbers just on the text label so the another way how what you can do is using map layers so for that click on the map make point drag it over to the dashboard and add a mark layer once you do that so that another section will be created here and again bring the name into the detail mark and with the make point actually so here you can what you can do if you want to create another layer on top of each of these sections you can do it this way but what I want is the atomic number I want it to be displayed at the right corner so I want the x and y coordinates for the second layer to be on the right top corner so what I will do so first of all I will remove this make point which we just created this was just to show you how we can use it so what I will do is I will create a duplicate value for make point and in this one I will say make point atomic number and I will edit that and what I will do is so I will add the value to x and y coordinate so I will say plus point let's say to seven so these are just the random number which I have already calculated before the demo before this tutorial so I will just add these two and what it will do is so it will shift the x and y coordinates with 0.27 value so I will now drag it and add it to the mark layer and I will change the circle and I will bring the name into the detail mark and I will change the color to let's say black so now you can see that particular x and y coordinate is plotted on the top right corner right so what I can do is instead of doing that color I can simply use the other color which is in the background and I will bring the atomic number and put it on the label mark so it is coming here right at the bottom I don't want it at the bottom so I will change the alignment and make it at the center so once I do that it is plotted on the top right corner as you can see here so now let's change the color of these values and you can actually use the different shade of blue here and you can increase the size and it's too big so let's reduce the size so it fits it in the square and also it gives the value within that so if we keep the same one and we reduce the opacity a little bit here or we can just add the border here so yeah that's that's a good effect isn't it so that way we have all of these numbers plotted on the top 
and you can also adjust the size of the bottom chart a little bit and after doing a bit of formatting we are all ready so these are the two ways with which you can create product table and you can also add the name at the bottom and that we can do it in the existing existing x and y coordinate the first one which we used so here we will go again and bring the name in the text label so i want the name at the bottom so i will remove this bring symbol at the top and i will bring name at the bottom and i will change the size of the name to six and here you go so now this way we can create periodic table in two different ways first by using simply x and y coordinates and plotting them in just one layer and the other one was where you can plot x and y coordinates using map layers so i hope you guys enjoyed this session and if you have any questions feel free to reach out thank you see you in the next one